Well, I'm from University of Nebraska, Lincoln, and I'm going to talk about uh, Google Earth Engine Europol Transpiration Flux, Earth Engine Europol Transpiration Flux. And those who don't know what ET is, Europol Transpiration, I'm going to use ET. You know, it's the um, summation of transpiration from vegetation and evaporation from soil and water. I would like to acknowledge our team. Uh, it's the EFLUX team is a consortium of three universities, including uh, University of Nebraska-Lincoln, Desert Research Institute, and University of Idaho. I believe uh, our PI from University of Idaho, uh, Dr. Allen, is here. Uh, Rick, are you around? Okay, here it is. All right, well, and then this, you know, it's been uh, two years of effort. We've been working on this, and eventually, you know, we're going to get there. Eflux, you know, I mean, the, the, really the key component is, you know, this is a complete land surface energy balance model. It needs thermal imagery, and that's why we can use either Landsat and MODIS, but we prefer Landsat because we would like to see the, the water consumption at the field scale at, from 30 meter. So that is why, you know, the, the Landsat is very important. Again, just the conservation of energy, ET, is being used as a residual in the land surface energy balance model. There are a number of data resources that EFLUX uses, including like the our Aldas to calibrate this uh, land surface, uh, the or originally it's the metric model. They use grid mat, the bias corrected with prism and NLCD. The um, soil data layers and data is more refined for corners, but uh, EFLUX is running at the global scale for entire uh, globe. This is a reference ET that's been calculated from the grid mat uh, for the 2012. We do have an app, you know, the reference ET app using this grid mat data. It, it helps, uh, allows you to estimate ET, reference ET. Uh, it's the ASE payment monthly, either hourly or daily time uh, step. Another thing, important crucial parameter is the it, uh, the model runs a water balance for the to account for the background evaporation, looking at pretty much the the wetness from the precipitation event. And so far, I think we have test runs uh, around 80 countries in the globe. And here the top one is uh, test case from Imperial Valley, California, Jordan, Chile. And the main dilemma, you know, we were uh, going through, I guess, uh, the automatic calibration of the model. There's a significant, am significant amount of user um, input for the collaboration, you really need an expert uh, user who has good understanding of environmental physics, remote sensing, hydrology, water resources. So it was really challenging for us to make this automatic collaboration working for any image anywhere on the planet, but it is complete now, it's working. Here's just a showing the ET map for the Palo Verde irrigation district. Um, here's, you know, the, the darker the green, that means ET. This is a, a, ref, a fraction of reference ET. The plants are transpiring almost at their potential rate. The ten colors are like almost, you know, bone dry. There is no ET. We are at the stage of developing APIs. Uh, the uh, complete, the code is being done. You know, those who have been attending the workshop, you've been working on the playground, developing these scripts. Now, you know, we're developing these APIs so that you, uh, you guys, you folk, just you uh, can call these uh, APIs and. Uh, estimate ET or, or depending on what you need, you know, if you need uh, just a reference ET or calculate some, do some radiation budget for your analysis, you can do that. This is how it shows you can call APIs. I believe in a month we will be ready 
to launch the E-Flux e for the 30 meter scale for entire globe. And I appreciate very much for the support that we received from uh, Google guys, including Rebecca, Tao, and Tyler, and all. Thanks. Thank you.